And spawning here, ladies and gentlemen, in the top left position as the blue Protoss player representing Alliance. A super strong Protoss. This is basically a home tournament for him in Sweden as well. He's a lot of fans around him. Can he pull this one off? Arguably his toughest opponent in this group, but everyone is really difficult at this stage. We have Naniwa. His opponent, who will be spawning as the purple Protoss player in the bottom right-hand side. Coming off a win against a very strong Zerg, but now he has to play a mirror matchup from Korea. Representing the team LGIM, we have Squirtle. Okay, are we all ready for bracket analysis? All right, bracket analysis it is. Game one. Game one. From these two players, right? Okay, we had Squirtle up against Nightend. Squirtle okay. lost. Okay. okay. But Naniwa was playing against Suppy. Yep. And Naniwa lost. Yep, sure. Okay. And they both lost 2-1. Yep, both lost 2-1. Mm -hmm. Then we jumped into the second game where Squirtle and Naniwa won. Naniwa beat Night End. Okay. And I'm Squirtle, starting to get confused. Keep yep. going. Squirtle beat Suppy. So that means Naniwa and Squirtle both have one win and one loss. Okay. Which is fine. Okay. Now, if Naniwa wins this game, he will finish top of the group. Whoever wins this game finishes top. Okay. Are we sure about that? Is there? I it, think they should. Is there any scenario where there might be like a crazy tie for the top of the group? I don't think it can be a crazy tie for the top of the group. Because Suppy also is Yeah, really because Suppy's not playing against Night End. And I think that's the one that's important. Okay. If Night End... If Suppy wins that, things get pretty crazy. Basically, the... It comes down to the result of these two matches, who actually goes through. And I th in, basically, Naniwa, whoever wins this, I believe is pretty safe. Okay. Whoever wins this. So basically, it looks like one of these players is going through. Whether or not it's in first position remains to be seen, because yep. it depends on the result of the other game. But uh, this series is absolutely vital to who progresses through the second group stage. And such good players. The fact that this is coming down in the second group stage of three medals, I think really, uh, really shows people just how unbelievably strong this tournament is. This isn't the latter stage. Of the this could easily be a quarter or a semi-final. And guess what, guys? It's happening in the second group stage of three. So that's pretty awesome. It is really awesome. Now, in terms of openings from these two, for the moment, from Squirtle, he's just getting up his second gateway there. So is Naniwa, though. Both players got their Mothership cores out. Both players running off two gas. Very similar. Every They're within one supply of each other. It's nothing nothing crazy occurring yet. Their warp gate techs are basically bang on the exact same time. But here, it's the first deviation. But only by a few seconds. Squirtle, he's going for that Twilight Council as well. Going Blink on this map is brilliant because there's so much cliff area into the main that you can utilize. Well, it looks like uh, so far we have I more or less identical builds from our players. Now, note that initially they got a Stalker out each and we see a little bit of variation here in that we see a Sentry coming out from Squirtle but no Sentry is on the field for Naniwa. Otherwise, though, very, very small differences and we can see both players using their Stalkers and their Probes just to non-stop scout around the map at the moment to look for any potential proxy pylon locations. Both of these players are incredibly safe right now, trying to make sure that there isn't some crazy early game aggression, but there is going to be shortly. We see a Dark Shrine coming up from Squirtle, immediately following the Twilight Council, and Naniwa is going to be using this Twilight Council to go game for Blink. Post. Of course, with Blink coming up, there's no robotic facility, no forge for a cannon or anything like that. And what you've got to be really cautious about is, well, Game what comes resumed. down is that there's ZTs. There's no detection there for Naniwa. And that's something that he's really got to think about in the very near future. And the Mothership Core Harass is coming in from Squirtle right now. Uh, not able to kill off any probes just yet. And there is actually a, uh, oh wow, there is actually a... Stalker there that might actually be able to pick off this Mothership Core entirely. Mass Recall having to be used there. Sorry for the overlay screw up there just now, guys. Had to switch it back. Hopefully you didn't miss too much. Mothership Core was recalled, and we even have uh, Naniwa's Mothership Core repelled from inside the main base. But it base. saw the Dark Shrine. It did see the Dark Shrine. And that's shrine. why that's very important. really important, because now the robotic facility started, the Observer should be out just about in time, or at least not terribly bad. Um, is there any sentries out for Naniwa at the moment? I don't think that they isn't. There's okay. a single sentry on the map, and it was Squirtle. So Squirtle's going to be able to force feed off the main row. Uh, clearly from experience, DT versus DT kind of games. And, uh, well, it looks like uh, 
That DT versus DT stuff might actually happen here as Naniwa goes for a Dark Shrine of his own. But, as things stand, that force mode is going to be really essential that I just heard go down at Naniwa's ramp. Because this just means that that DT can't come running up, which gives a bit more chance to get down the Observer. Both players are trying to get up their naturals. The Stalkers are now going to have to sit there. The force swords are going to have to keep coming down. The Observer should be getting corner boosted from Naniwa now. Which means he will have protection when this DT gets shut down. Yeah. Both players are in a pretty similar position now. Yeah, this is actually, um, for all the uh, potential damage that DTs can do early game, this is actually going to be relatively even for our players and devoid of aggression simply because the players are defending just as well as they're being aggressive right now. So DT not able to get any damage done from Squirtle. The Observer is out on the field right now. There's going to be a Dark Shrine of his own from Naniwa soon. I wonder if Squirtle's going to be expecting that because obviously his DT's hit an awful lot sooner. He has seen the Dark Shrine during building now, so he is getting ready. And, uh, well... Mothership Core doing a little bit more damage, not very much. Three workers have been killed this game though, which in a mirror matchup can be substantial moving on later. But uh, we'll wait and see if none of us lost nothing though. He hasn't. At all. And that's actually something that's really quite important because mm. he's being indefinably more cost effective than his opponent. So if he keeps that up, he's definitely won. It's true. Divide by zero. Divide by do zero. It. That's, uh, that's what Naniwa Isn't is Isn't that how for. Mothership calls, uh, Motherships used to make vortexes? That is how Motherships used to make yeah. vortexes. You divide your opponent's army by zero. And then add a few archons. Easy and win. Easy. Yeah. Just like exactly that. how it works. And we have got an observer from Squirrel now moving out across the map. Note that there are a proxy pylon and we also have the probe at this watchtower as well. That's going to help uh, potentially spotting any units that want to sneak by here, but also great for putting maybe an extra pylon to attack the third base a little bit later on. And it looks like Squirtle's going to be following this up with some air action medals. And double Stargate. This is a really interesting switch up. Naniwa's going to be going into those Colossi. Now, I'm actually recalling straight away of this very similar situation occurring back in WCS EU Challenger with MC versus Grubby. Mm. This game is nearly a replica of that in many ways. And what actually happened was, in that game, MC got a huge number of um, Colossi out, but then there was a good number of Tempest down. Yeah. For Grubby, and he annihilated the oh, Colossus. Oh yeah, Tempest is so, so good against those Colossi. And that could be happening here. But Naniwa, he's going to be continuing in with just some DT production. Phoenix are going to be coming out for Squirtle. And Squirtle can keep that harassment up with those Phoenix for a long period of time. Can lift things like the Immortals out of the army composition. And that can be really frustrating in any engagements that go down. Forward pile now getting taken out from Naniwa, who's decided that now would be a good time to start maneuvering across the map. Worth noting that Naniwa hasn't actually made any Dark Templars since completing that Dark Shrine. He wants that there in case he sees any interesting opportunities to warp in some DCs as the game goes on. Not something he's looking to do at this very moment. Three additional gateways going down for him as well, though, and they are about to complete. Um, the forward pile from is going down quite close. I have to say, to Squirtle's base, and Naniwa, with a slender lead in supply right now, is looking like he wants to put on the aggression. A lot of very beefy units in here as well. Three Immortals and an Archon. That is no laughing matter. It isn't. There are some Void Rages trying to come out here for Squirtle behind it, but Naniwa's already got quite a lot. Phone Light Overcharge being triggered oh. really early. Kills the Observer. Is this going to prompt him to make a D2 or suit to supplement this yep. attack, I wonder? I saw them warping in. Here they come. Three DTs are going to be making their So forward. smart. No detection? Oh no, this is this could be highly problematic. Look at that damage they're doing. This is a real nightmare right now for Squirtle because he's got no detection out on the field at no all. Detection. The Nexus Cannon is doing some nice bits of damage. The Voidway is focusing a sentry, which is less than ideal. Now trying to pick up some of the Stalkers, but things are looking really good for Naniwa at the moment. He knocks out the natural. That is such a big win already. Even if he pulls back now, he is massively far ahead. Yep, the Nexus goes down. The Dark Templars are still trying to get a whole bunch of damage done. And look, we don't. We now have another Observer in production, but those DTs did so much damage. Three kills on that DT, and I'm not going to find out how many the other ones got because they are becoming an Archon right now. Naniwa is pushing up the ramp. He's 81 to 62 supply. More units being warped in, but is it going to be enough? The Immortal might be able to take out some of these stalkers but it looks like the two uh, immortals plus the boy gray might be enough oh has he overextended there great blink back from naniwa immediately picking off the boy gray but he would blink straight into the line of those immortals but it's not going to be enough and squirtle ggs out naniwa wins game number one